So a woman is now saying that Justin Bieber is the father of her three-month-old baby boy. The men plan to strangle Bieber and his bodyguard with a paisley tie. Then the suspects allegedly were going to castrate them both. Justin Bieber's rise to fame is a unique one. Upon gaining internet notability, Justin would go on to become a global sensation. By the time he was a teen, Justin was topping the Billboard charts and causing quite the scene. Just 16, but he's already a legitimate international pop star. Justin Bieber's new album, My World 2.0, is in stores Tuesday, but already over a million copies have been ordered in the United States alone. It is a remarkable achievement for a young man discovered just a few years ago on YouTube. He has a voice so high and a face so young that some have dubbed him the singing fetus. His new CD is ready to drop next week, steeped in the baby blue-eyed soul that brought him here. Oh, my precious little lady. I sing a lot about girls, but you know, I don't, I'm at that age where I just I really like girls. Bieber fever consumed pop culture, with young girls from all over the world idolizing the teen. But one fan would take it too far, when in 2011, she accused the singer of fathering her baby. This big story broke overnight that's even bigger than Kim Kardashian at this moment. And it's the allegations that Justin Bieber might be a father. Aww. Did you guys hear about this? Well, everybody's talking about, oh, I don't have my Star Magazine out here. Uh, but look, Star Magazine is reporting that there's this 20-year-old woman. Hold on, because you know I have an opinion on this story, but let me just get it out first. <laughs> There's a 20-year-old woman who filed a paternity suit against Justin. And she is saying that she went to see Justin in concert in L.A. at the Staples Center and that Justin's security handpicked her out from the audience and had her go backstage to meet Justin. So this is according to her in the star. Once she and Justin met up, Justin was like, do you want to go someplace, you know, more yeah. private? <laughs> and... Mind you, at the time, Justin was 17 and this young lady is 20 years old and he took her to the bathroom. A few days prior to the star breaking the story, 20-year-old Mariah Yater filed a paternity suit against Justin on October 31st, 2011. In the lawsuit, she requested that Justin submit to a paternity test and provide adequate support for the baby. In a sworn statement, Mariah said that Justin approached her on October 25th 2010, after his concert at the L.A. Staples Center. Quote, Immediately, it was obvious that we were mutually attracted to one another, and we began to kiss. Shortly thereafter, Justin Bieber suggested that I go with him to a private place where we could be alone. I agreed to go with him, and on the walk to a private area, he told me he wanted to make love to me, and this was going to be his first time. We went inside and immediately his personality changed drastically. He began touching me and repeatedly said he wanted to F the S out of me. At the time, I asked him to put a condom on for protection, but he insisted that he did not want to. In his own words, he said that because it was his first time, he wanted to feel everything. He took her in a bathroom backstage at the Staples Center where they allegedly had sex with no condom. Well, according to the article in the Star, she asked him about a condom and he said, no, this is my first time and I want to feel everything. <laughs> Funny, right? <laughs> well, then, then she goes on to say it lasted for 30 seconds. The baby boy, the baby boy is now three months old. So Justin could be a baby's father. I don't say baby daddy, by the way. And whenever I do, I just slip up because that's all you all say. There's just something about that baby daddy thing that just, it just is just so disrespectful. It's just, I say baby's father. Anyway, um, Justin could be a baby's father. Upon allegations that Justin fathered a child, he took to social media where he seemingly addressed the rumors, writing, quote, so I'm going to ignore the rumors and focus on what is real an opportunity to help by doing what I love. Judge me on my music. Love y'all. Justin's legal team would also respond, 
and completely refute the rumors, saying, While we haven't yet seen the lawsuit, it's sad that someone would fabricate malicious, defamatory, and demonstrably false claims. We will vigorously pursue all available legal remedies to defend and protect Justin against these allegations. How do you know that what your client is saying is 100% credible, 100% true? Right. We know. And um, uh, we want to uh, uh, scientifically confirm that. Okay. So, so you've talked to her. She's told you her full story. So far, you trust her unequivocally. Yes. Now, I, I just want to read your complaint here. I was reading this this afternoon, and it says, based upon the timing as well as the fact that there are no other possible men that I had sex with that could be the father of this baby, that's sort of the basis of this claim. To me, that sounds like, and I'm going to be honest with you here, she had sex with other men. She believes it's Justin Bieber which makes the cynics say, well, wait a second, if she had sex with other men, how do we know it wasn't one of those other men? Right. Well, I mean, in the relevant time period, mm -hmm. she wasn't having sex with anyone else. Okay. And that's how we know that Justin Bieber is, in fact, the father of the baby. Um, that's really what it all boils down to. But I'll again harp on the, um, we need the paternity test to verify that scientifically 100%. And that's what we're asking for at this point. It's really a modest request. We're not asking for an exorbitant amount of money. We just need him to step up and take the paternity test. Why come out publicly on this? Why not privately do it, do it out of the press? Because Guys, people are saying, wait a second, she must be a scorned fan. Sure. Right. She's just come up, she's trying to get money out of Justin Bieber. He's America's hero. Why would she take this public if she didn't try to embarrass him or try to trick him into giving her money? Just to be clear, we would love to resolve this mm -hmm. in a private, confidential, and reasonable manner. And if Justin Bieber, through his attorneys, would like to contact us and uh, open up a dialogue, we'd be happy to engage in that. But thus far, we have not heard from them whatsoever. So at this stage in the game, you know, we're left with no other choice. You know, in this, uh, in this claim that you filed, there is a lot of talk of how the situation happened, that she was out there at the concert, she was near the front row, he sort of singled her out, she comes up, they have an encounter, the details of the encounter are sordid, maybe a little embarrassing if you look at it, she's talking about he didn't last very long, all that kind of stuff. Again, I think the point here is that people will say, okay, if, if, if she did in fact have his baby, she wants that paternity test, why bring out all the details about the way he did this and he wanted to be all over her and just some of the words that were used were kind of like he wanted to tear my clothes off. Right. Why all that? Well, again, you know, we have a responsibility to uh, uh, present uh, credible evidence under oath. And uh, it was important for us to make sure that we had the details correct and that, uh, that those details were verified and signed by our client. Um, again, we wanted to be very clear about this encounter, and uh, we felt it was our responsibility as attorneys to make sure we got the, uh, the encounter correct. At the time of these allegations, Justin had a very innocent reputation. He was dating Disney star Selena Gomez, and the two were considered America's sweethearts. As a teen idol, Justin was adored and loved by many. The Justin Bieber we know, he's friendly, he's good to people, and I guess the idea here is he's not coming forward, he's not trying to reach out, he's dismissing this as a rumor, but, you know, I just have to say, there is going to be a thought here, guys, that she put herself into this situation, that how many fans, how many women around the world want Justin Bieber? So she puts herself into this situation, and then all of a sudden she comes back and she says, oh, well, he's responsible. He's got something that he has to live up to. What do you say to that? Because is this simply about how he, in your mind, impregnated her? Or is it about, hey, she might be a woman scorned who's upset that she didn't give, he didn't give her her number afterwards? Yeah. Um, you know, under the California Family Code, mm -hmm. both parents have a mutual obligation to support their children, all right? We're not asking for anything, uh, you know, excessive, but uh, this, this child, if it is in fact Justin Bieber's child, which we believe it to be, uh, should be at least raised in a, a comfortable middle class uh, standard, you know? So that's what this is really about. If she's not telling the truth, she's looking at a perjury claim. Be honest with you, that's a couple years in prison. 
And uh, Mariah is well aware of all the possible consequences that could result from um, this not being true. We have every reason to believe in her story, and that's why we put our names on this lawsuit. We filed it in good faith, um, and we, we stand by her. What do you do if the paternity test checks out that Justin Bieber is not the father? Well, and, they, and by the way, guys, they come after you. They come after Mariah, and they say, look, it wasn't Justin Bieber. Now guess what? We're suing you. You're going to be in court. Right? Well, we, we think that's highly unlikely uh, based upon the evidence that we have, not all of which has been released in the media by any means. There is credible evidence that's going to support that he is the father of this baby. But in response to your hypothetical question, if uh, it comes back negative, he's not the father, Justin Bieber moves on with his music career, and we certainly wish him the best. We have no animosity towards him whatsoever. All right, Mark, I, I, I like Justin Bieber's music. You know, this is not an anti-Justin uh, Bieber suit. This is, we're just doing our jobs as lawyers. We did our due diligence before, before filing this suit. But and arguably, we by, by bringing this case, it's a huge boon to you guys. I mean, obviously. And again, I mean, yeah, again, you're, you're doing yeah. your job as lawyers. But if this actually goes forward, you, you make know, an answer. Another, another lawyer just told me recently that uh, uh, it's just another client. This story made headlines and was all over the press. It became a frenzy. And according to Mariah, as a result, she received tons of backlash and death threats from his fans. One commenter wrote, quote, Mariah Yader, I'm a good person. I should give you a device. Well, go away before millions of believers end your life. Another wrote, quote, Roses are red, violets are blue. Mariah Yader, we are going to end you. In the middle of the firestorm, Mariah spoke exclusively to Inside Edition, giving her side of the story. So tell me about the night, the concert. What was it like that night at Staples? He immediately took a liking to me. And uh, we just got to talking and, you know, it was kind of me and him with other people elsewhere. And, and then he eventually asked me, he said, would you mind if we can go somewhere and be alone? And then when we got to the turned out to be a bathroom, his, his whole demeanor changed. It went from cute and gushy, you know, to uh, just more aggressive. There are people watching this that are not going to believe what you're saying. I've, I've provided ev evidence to my attorneys, and it'll show in court Can to I... prove that my allegations are true. Can I ask you what, the, what that proof might be, or can we have any sorry, inkling? No. Your attorneys are asking for a DNA test, and they also said that you were more than willing to take a polygraph test. You feel like you have nothing to hide. I have nothing to hide. When you tried to contact Justin or Justin's people, what was their reaction? No contact. I think nothing. I heard nothing. I, I do not know what I'm getting myself into really uh, this is this is a lot after the court date and Justin takes this DNA test will it prove hands down that that is his baby no questions about it with Mariah now in the spotlight her past would come back to haunt her a mugshot of her resurfaced upon news that she had been arrested for DV against former boyfriend John Terranova in an interview with the New York Post he said, quote, she came back here from California telling me she was pregnant with my child. And I said, this is impossible. You've been in California two months and back here for only a week. After I told her, that's not my kid. You've only been here for a week. She told me, no, I got pregnant before I left you. But it didn't make sense because she had a doctor's note saying she wasn't pregnant enough for that to be possible. It didn't add up. She tried to tell me it was my kid after one week. For a second, I believed her. Then I went and talked to my grandma, who said, no, sweetie, that's not possible. So when I went back to her, she tried to say she got pregnant before she left. According to John, he and Mariah dated for four years after meeting her at a Las Vegas high school for students who had been kicked out of their other schools. John would tell the publication that he broke up with Mariah after he learned she had cheated on him. In December of 2010, Mariah was arrested for battery for slapping John during an argument. Quote, I was sitting in my room talking to my girlfriend when my brother came in and said, dude, Mariah is on the couch downstairs. 
I came downstairs with my girlfriend, and when Mariah saw her, she freaked out. She came outside to my girlfriend's car and picked up a brick and threw it at the back windshield and the back left passenger window. She broke those two windows. I came outside and asked her why she's breaking all our stuff. Me and her got into a shouting match right there on the driveway, when all of a sudden she told me to get out of her face and she didn't want to see me anymore. And I told her, if that's the case, you need to get off my driveway because you're at my house. She hit me in the mouth three times and told me I can't talk to her like that. I called the police and she got arrested. She was crying in the back seat of the car saying it wasn't supposed to be like this. John's girlfriend Lacey added, quote, Poor Justin Bieber. He's worked so hard for his career and to deal with this, she just wants to get her name out there. She's a gold digger and just wants someone to take care of her. She was a really big party animal who got around a lot. She was a big slut. She's scandalous. I have to be a little straightforward with you and tell you that the security guard we talked to, he said that Justin went to the dressing room that night. He went into the dressing room. His mother was there. His hairstylist was there. His best friend was there. Then he came out of the dressing room. He was with him the whole time. They walked him to the car. Why would he say that? No comment. I want to show you what Justin said on the Today Show about this situation. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, here we go. There is a pretty white hot spotlight, and you of found course. yourself under it recently. Yeah. Some headlines are someone is filing a paternity suit. Exactly. Saying you're the father of a three month old son. What would you like to say about that? I'd just like to say basically that none of those allegations are true, and, and I know that I know that I'm going to be a vic I'm going to be uh, a target, but I'm never going to be a victim. You know, I think it's just it's crazy because every night after the show I'm I'm gone right from the stage right to my car so it's crazy that some people want to make up such false allegations but set the record straight none of it is true do you know this woman her name is Mariah Eater have you ever met never her? met the woman her claim that she and a group of girls first met Justin after the concert in a special VIP room and that he picked her over the others. Could any of those other girls that were in that room substantiate this story? <laughs> I know it's tough, but it is. A, I, yeah. I know it's yeah, tough, it but... Is. Could one of those girls substantiate this story? Is was it? Could one I, of those girls? Give me girls? one minute. Okay. If you could send a message right now to Justin, what message would you send to Justin? What would you say to him? Mariah's story had several holes in it and many discrepancies. Weeks before Justin was set to take the DNA test, Mariah withdrew the paternity suit. At the time. Her lawyers attributed the withdrawal to death threats she had been receiving. The following day, however, more information would come to light. Text messages obtained by TMZ showed Mariah naming another man as the father of her baby and offering to pay someone to keep quiet. The New York Daily News wrote, The woman who claims Justin Bieber fathered her infant son reportedly ordered a cover-up of incriminating text messages suggesting another man might be the boy's dad. In a text message exchange, Mariah wrote, Please erase all messages from my mom, where she says Tristan is Robbie's son. I'll kick you when we get paid. I'm trusting you. Please. In an earlier text, she wrote, Would you please stress to Robbie how important it is for him to be in his son's life? According to TMZ, these messages were sent on August 16, 2011 two months before she filed the suit against Justin Bieber. With this new information coming out, Mariah's legal team dropped her. She would retain new legal representation who made it clear that despite Mariah dropping the paternity suit, they still intended to pursue Justin privately. In a statement, her lawyer said, quote, I originally wanted a judge to order a DNA test to make sure the test's chain of custody was safeguarded. But the reality is 
That was before these death threats escalated. As they've gotten so out of control, maintaining strict confidentiality is something we have to try. If this doesn't work and we can't work it out, we can always refile. In response, Justin's lawyer said, quote, Our independent investigation indicated Ms. Yader never met Justin. She has consistently identified another man as the child's father. And Ms. Yader and her co-conspirators hatched a scheme in order to extort money from him and to sell her story to the media. As we've said from the beginning, it's sad that someone would fabricate such a malicious, defamatory, and demonstrably false claim. We'll continue to consider all of our options to protect Justin. Still going to pursue legal action against Mariah Yeter? I mean, he honestly hasn't been paying much attention to it. because He's never met the girl, and he said it's false like 15 times. He's, you know, ready to take a paternity test at any moment. We have one scheduled for tomorrow. They, we've never even seen the lawsuit, but we're going to just get ahead of this thing and go right after it. And I think it's important to hold people accountable for their actions. At the end of the day, we could shy away from it, but I think it's important not only for him, but for all the people in his position to kind of make a statement that it's not it's not cool. You know, he's trying to be a role model and you're not going to come in and just slander him and feel like you can walk away and everything's fine. Okay. Cuz it's going to it could happen again like just because she <clears throat> just cuz she did it, then like we don't want to make it seem like it's okay for everyone else to just say, "Oh yeah, Justin has ha had my baby or having my baby." So I just Justin's think, actually having my baby. Yeah, that's actually. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh I'm pregnant. I'm I'm showing pause, soon. Bro. You are going to take the paternity test tomorrow? Yeah, we, we're just going to, he doesn't mind. He's like, I'm just going to get ahead of it and be fine. And it doesn't matter. I, Does it make you nervous, though, that you're always going to have to defend yourself? No, like, I think we're going to make it, we're going to let people know that if we have to defend ourselves, then there's going to be consequences to their actions. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, that's what's important, to basically put that message out there that we're not just going to say, okay, look, we didn't do it, but we're going to say that if you go after someone, that there's consequences to your actions when you make something up and you blatantly lie. Per reports, Justin would take a paternity test, despite the suit being dropped on November 18, 2011. According to Justin, he wanted to prove to the world that he was not the father, and the results would show that he wasn't. You saw red. I was so angry. You were angry. Why were you angry? Well, I, I could smell a, a weasel. A weasel. A weasel. I mean, I think I can, I can smell a weasel, too. Yeah. A little bit. I know it's pretty crazy, you know, people, people make up false now, does this make, does this, do you find this discouraging, that the, this sort of um, energy is out there in the world, people trying to hurt you? Do you I would be discouraged by Not that. Not really. I mean, I, I'm, I'm 17, but I mean, it's going to happen, you know, being in this, you know, in, in the spotlight. People can say people or do can, anything they want. People can say whatever. And, and you were man enough from the beginning. You said, oh, yeah, that's not true, and I'll take one of those uh, uh, DNA tests. Yeah. Did you take one of those things? Yeah, I took how, it. How do they do that? What's the procedure? Are you unconscious? They just, they just, no, <laughs> they just swab your mouth. <laughs> so you're not unconscious? <laughs> no. Is there disrobing? Dis what? Disrobing? With the baby drama behind him, Justin would move forward and focus on his music, as a way to announce the release of his new single, Boyfriend, Justin tweeted the following to Mariah Yater. Justin Bieber has over 20 million followers on Twitter, and yesterday, boy, he gave them quite a bit to tweet about. The most confusing comment of all, a shot he took at the woman who accused him of fathering her baby last November. Justin Bieber seemed to spend the weekend tweeting dozens of messages to his millions of followers, and some of them were confusing. The most eye-opening? The one he appears to have aimed at the woman who accused him of fathering her child. Bieber tweeting, Dear Mariah Yater, we have never met, so from the heart, I just wanted to say... And then he attached a link with an audio clip from the movie Borat. You will never get this. You will never get this. La, 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 la. The tweet comes five months after Yater withdrew her lawsuit against Bieber. This latest tweet against the woman who filed the paternity suit against him is just way off base. And what I think it's evidence of, it's something that really bothered him deep down and continues to bother him. The Mariah Yater situation did bother Justin, but he would use it as inspiration for his song, Maria Maria. In it, he addresses Mariah and all the things she put him through in the year prior. Speaking of songs about whatever is going on in your life, Maria. Yeah. What's that song about? Well, it's, you know, it's inspired by basically uh, Mariah Yeeter, who uh, 
claimed that she that I she had my baby, but, uh, which is completely false. You have to listen to the song. It's cool. I mean, it basically explains my side of the story, um, how I felt in the situation and stuff like that. People compare it to Billie Jean. It's crazy. I mean, uh, that was definitely an inspiration. Um, uh, Michael Jackson is an inspiration. So to hear yeah. that, that's it's great. And t tell me about that experience. What, what was that like from the inside for you when she started making these claims? As you said, completely disproven. Uh, I mean, at first, I mean, I didn't really even pay attention to it. I was like, oh, this is crazy. This will blow over. And then it made headline news. And I was like, why are they even picking this up? It's, it's ridiculous. Like, why? And... You know, it's crazy that if someone says something, people are quick to believe it. I right. thought I didn't even think anyone would believe it, but did you resent having to take a paternity test to disprove her? Uh, I, I didn't want to take it just because of the fact of like it's like why should I have to do this? Like, am I gonna have to do this every time someone says it? That like, this is ridiculous. But you know, I just wanted to, it to be over. So by the time it was like dragged on, I was like, fine, I'll just take it. This is ridiculous. So I took it and it was fine. Justin's encounter with troubled fans wouldn't end there. Later that year, he would be involved in another disturbing situation when a convict by the name of Dana Martin hired two men to end Justin's life and castrate him. It was a murder-for-hire plot that swept the nation. Justin Bieber's had his share of obsessed fans, typically teen and tween girls. Nothing like this 45-year-old man police say was the mastermind of a bizarre plot to kill the Canadian pop star. Investigators say Dana Martin, a convicted killer currently serving two life sentences in a New Mexico prison for killing a 15-year-old girl, came up with an elaborate and grisly plot to murder four people, including Bieber, who's referenced as victim three in this arrest affidavit. Mr. Martin stated victim three has a measure of fame and that he had become infatuated with victim three. This infatuation was exemplified by the tattooing of an image of victim three on Mr. Martin's leg. So why would he want to kill Bieber? According to the police report, Martin had written to the singer several times, and victim three never returned in kind. This perceived slight made Mr. Martin upset. According to reports, in 2012, Dana Martin enlisted the help of former inmate Mark Stakey and his nephew Tanner Ruane. The Atlantic writes, Mark and his nephew Ruane allegedly planned to murder and castrate the singer with garden shears, they were operating under the instruction of Dana Martin. According to reports, Martin was upset with Justin's recent behavior as he felt that the singer had become too edgy. Martin claimed that it angered him so much he wanted to take Justin's life. The Associated Press wrote, an imprisoned man whose infatuation with Justin Bieber included a tattoo of the pop star on his leg has told investigators in New Mexico he hatched a plot to murder the singer. Martin told investigators he persuaded a man he met in prison and the man's nephew to murder Bieber, along with Bieber's personal bodyguard and two others not connected to the pop star. The plot contains several gruesome details. Investigators say the plotters wanted to castrate two of the victims with hedge clippers before traveling to New York City to find Bieber. In an affidavit, Martin instructed Stakey and Ruane to strangle the two first intended targets with Paisley neckties, the same kind he used in his 2000 murder case. Here are audio clips of the suspects discussing the details. Can you go over the beaver thing with you? No. -uh. No, -uh. yeah. -uh, like the way I work, dude, the way I work is I like to know as little as possible. We went and we bought some, uh, you know, the hedge clippers you're gonna give me five large for each one i get the men are using code words referring to bieber as a pit bull while they plotted how to suffocate the pop star using his signature paisley scarf listen to this you're gonna kill the pit bulls and uh, you're gonna castrate them tight really really tight knot in the front once really tight and put in a knot that cuts off the oxygen and then you tie it in the back again really tight and that uh, just seals the deal Calls recorded at the state pen in Las Cruces between convicted killer Dana Martin and wannabe hitman Tanner Ruane. Set on taking care of going and adopting these dogs. Uh, and castrating them. Yeah, her. I was going to do that. That was all me. Martin asks for details. We went and we bought some, uh, you know, the hedge clippers, the hand, the hand hedge clippers. 
You gotta be kidding me. Hell yeah, yeah, dude. That was no, nope, that was all me. I was gonna get down and dirty. I told him you're gonna give me five large for each one I get. I told him it had to be a paisley tie because that's what I used on my. Do you know what paisley is? The paisley pattern. Ruane says he doesn't want to go alone to Bieber in New York City, where the pop star was set to play at Madison Square Garden. The next day, Martin calls Ruane again. He tells him why he wants Bieber and mutilated. Caught up, in the, caught up in the Bieber fever. Martin says when Bieber's blockbuster movie came out in 2011, he got a prison tattoo. It says Justin Bieber, it says Never Say Never, and it says February 11, 2011, and it has a portrait of Bieber on the back of my calf. But Martin turned against Bieber last year when the star got a tattoo with the name of his next album. You know what, you little piece of shit. You know what, it was me first. I, it was my idea first. To carry out this plot, Stakey and Ruane were set to head out from New Mexico to the East Coast, planning to be near a Bieber concert scheduled in New York City, after castrating two others. According to reports, they missed a turn and crossed into Canada from Vermont. Stakey was arrested on an outstanding warrant, and Ruane was arrested later when Dana Martin told police what they were all up to. In November, Steak and Ruane drove to Vermont to kill two of Martin's old acquaintances, but Steak made a wrong turn into a Canadian border crossing. He was arrested when agents checked his ID and found the parolee was not supposed to leave New Mexico. This is the phone call that Martin made from prison later that day to Ruane, who is now on his own. Dude, it pisses me off so bad, brother. I wanted this to go down so bad. I was ready. We were there last night, dude. They came very close. Ruane tells Martin they went to the home of one of the targets where a nine-year-old girl answered the door and said her father wasn't there. Ruane and Martin refer to the targets as dogs. Uh, if you took um, some horrific movie and had it written by people who were sort of lo- in the process of losing their minds, that's what the, this plot would look like. You're absolutely right. This is absolutely disgusting. These men conspired to, what they were going to do, they were going to kidnap Justin Bieber and his bodyguard. They even were plotting to use a specific tie, a paisley tie, which was the trademark of Martin, who's in jail for rape and murdering a 15-year-old girl. That's what he used back then was a paisley tie. They were going to use it on both of them. And then after they strangled them, they were going to castrate them. And he even had promised them $2,500 for each body part that they cut off. It, it, it's beyond comprehension. And it, you don't want to be too gross, but the facts of the case are that when they arrested the young one, the uh, nephew, uh, they found shrub cutters. And you can do the they math. Did. It's unbelievable, Alexis. You're absolutely right. He had a specific pair of gardening shears in there, and this is what they plan to do. And this isn't, you know, a teenage girl who really, really, really wants to meet Justin Bieber and sends him too many tweets. These are convicted felons who had a serious plan to murder Justin and his bodyguard and two other men. These guys are definitely, they belong behind bars for a really long time for this. Yeah, I mean, it's a classic case of too much time on your hands behind bars to get obsessed. And get this, cops say this convicted killer, this tough guy, tipped off the cops when apparently he had a change of heart, had second thoughts. And so they ended up foiling all of this before anything could happen to Justin Bieber, thank God. But my gosh, uh, J.D. Wadrob, criminal defense attorney, the idea that he was obsessed with Justin Bieber... He's murdered before, he murdered a girl, okay, a young girl. He's doing two life terms behind bars. And then he suddenly becomes obsessed with this young boy, his 18-year-old boyish superstar, tattoos Justin Bieber's image on his leg. And then because Justin doesn't write him back, actually we've manipulates seen this- two people into trying to kill him. Well, you know, we've seen this before. We've seen it with Mark Chapman when he killed John Lennon. We've seen it when Jodie Foster was stalked. I mean, these people want to get their names in history books. They want to get the, you know, the infamy. They want to be known for something. And it's a power play. Upon their arrest, Stakey was charged with two counts, each of conspiracy to commit first degree murder and conspiracy to commit aggravated battery with a deadly weapon in connection to the plan. Ruane, Stakey's nephew, was also charged in relation to the plot. So what happened to the suspects? In 2015, 
Mark Stakey was sentenced to nine years for conspiracy to commit first degree murder and another nine years to be served concurrently for a second count of conspiracy to commit first degree murder. But in a jailhouse interview, Stakey says that story isn't true. He claims he came to Vermont to pick up a Ferrari that he was given title to by a convicted Vermont murderer, Dana Martin. Stakey met Martin during a different stint behind bars. Prison officials say Martin promised Stakey and his nephew, Tanner Ruain, cash and cars if they carried out the Bieber murder plot. Stakey says he had no knowledge of the plan and says Martin hatched it in a desire to become infamous. I couldn't stop laughing for 45 minutes because it's just so, it's, I mean, quite frankly, I would have had a better chance of going and kidnapping Osama bin Laden and killing him than getting anywhere remotely close to Justin Bieber. Tanner Ruane pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit first degree murder and received a deferred sentence of five years. After serving about a year and a half, he was placed on supervised probation. When it pertains to this case, Dana Martin pleaded guilty to criminal solicitation to commit first-degree murder and criminal solicitation to commit felony murder. His sentence was nine years followed by two years probation. However, Dana Martin is currently serving consecutive life sentences for the murder of a 15-year-old girl in 2000. It's very easy to form an obsession with someone, whether they're a celebrity or just a regular person. You could follow their Facebook message, you could follow their Twitter posting. You begin to feel that you have an intimate relationship with that person, and then you're constantly checking their online postings. You know where they are. This leads to a sense of familiarity that otherwise wouldn't be there.